So I fell in love with the Eucharist at Focus Conference when I had my first experience of adoration. Um, so I had never, yeah, I'd grown up my whole life hearing, you know, the teachings of the faith that this is Jesus and when we receive the Eucharist, we receive him, but it never sunk in until three years ago <laughs> um, at Focus Conference. And I <clears throat> just had this huge conversion experience of zoning in on Christ in the monstrance and um, yeah, just starting to understand that what I'd heard my whole life was actually true and it was literal and he was right there in the room and you know, he was looking at me and I was looking at him. So helping with um, the adoration throughout the Archdiocese with the young adults um, has been just life-changing. It's drawn me deeper into the mystery of the Eucharist, and I've always really connected with music. Um, that's one of my favorite ways to pray is through music. So being able to help with the music ministry um, during a holy hour is, yeah, one of my favorite things that I ever get to do. So teach my song to rise to Um, I guess something revelation during adoration would be when I started my discernment of religious life. Um, it was wrapped up in the same experience of my conversion and just really coming back to the faith um, when I started to understand Christ's presence in the Eucharist. In that same experience, I heard or felt a voice, you know, just saying you need to look into religious life and. Not necessarily that I was called to it, but at least check it out and, you know, trust that the direction I was going to move in was, I wasn't walking alone in that. I am entering the Sisters of St. Francis of Perpetual Adoration in Mishawaka, Indiana. Um, I think I realized I wanted to be a sister gradually. It wasn't like a, an aha moment or anything. Um, yeah, I just, it's like falling in love. Um, so I fell in love with Jesus and then I fell in love with the community and then I started learning more about them and yeah, just spending time with them and I realized that there wasn't anywhere else I wanted to be more than with them and in that moment and um, in the ministries that they're doing. So I'm just kind of jumping forward with, <laughs> with that and hoping that, um, or knowing that God's guiding me through that. Oh, why would I
I'm going to give a shout out to anybody that <laughs> has maybe ever had a thought cross their mind, whether they want to admit it or not, about a vocation um, to just go with it and trust God and see what happens because it was never anything I was looking for. Um, my whole life I was, my goal was, you know, find the husband and have all these kids and be Catholic super mom. And, um, and when I had this experience of conversion and discernment beginning, that was seemed like the complete opposite. But now that I've come to um, to go with that, I'm learning that it's it's all similar. It's all wrapped up together. And every vocation is beautiful in its own way. And they all have aspects of family. And they all have aspects of faith. And, um, yeah, just go with it. Because the desires that are put on your heart are there for a reason. And we're not going to understand them at the beginning. But... God's plans are so much better than the ones we make for ourselves.